Welcome back to Defense News Weekly, coming at you from this year's Navy League Sea, Air and Space Conference. This year's event opened with a gathering of the service chiefs from the Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Merchant Marines. And all of them had one big topic on their minds, recruitment. With money flowing from Congress and increased demands for preparation for a potential major power competition, the chiefs said they need to invest in one major asset first, personnel. Here's some of what they had to say. Our Navy and Marine Corps are more than just advanced platforms and weapon systems. Our people remain our greatest strength and are at the heart of everything that we do. Over the past year, we have worked tirelessly to make quality of life improvements for our sailors, Marines, and their families through a focus on better housing, expanding access to childcare, implementing new strategies to combat destructive behavior wherever they may be found. My highest priorities, I'm not going to uh, unpack sort of the, the Coast Guard strategy that's out there, but you know, the highest priority uh, is around uh, people. Uh, you're going to hear it, I think, from all of us that, well, it's great to be on budget for new assets, new uh, ships and aircraft. If we don't make the investments in the people, uh, it won't, uh, the, the aircraft won't, won't operate, the ships uh, won't be able to uh, maneuver. We are, as many other agencies are, challenged to find enough mariners. You've heard the secretary refer to uh, the, the goodness of serving uh, a, a career in the military. Well, there's goodness to serving on a career in the Merchant Marine as well, and we need you. We need mariners. Uh, we're short, we know that, and we share that need with uh, certainly the armed services and many others around the country. We need mariners. 7% of the U.S. mariner fleet, in the U.S. flag fleet are women. We're very short of women mariners, and we're very short of minority mariners. When you listen to mariners and ask them what they want now about their quality of life, they will tell you, and it's pretty simple. They want internet. They want gym equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. They want good food, and I can tell you on the Ready Reserve Force, good food is not a problem. And, uh, and, but they want that connectivity, and they want a modern quality of life. We have to deliver on expectations that they have. Um, healthcare. We have, there has been a contract, an understanding between service members and the nation that if you join the military, you're going to have the very best military care in the world, and you're going to have it accessible to you where you are. And we have to make sure that that's the case for as long as they serve and if they retire afterwards. Quality of life, the other thing probably that most people wouldn't uh, inherently, intuitively think about, quality of life for Marines uh, in, in one key aspect is how well trained they are. If you're a leader, in other words, winning depends on the very best trained, well-led units you can have. So quality of life means the most realistic training we can provide. We have to put money, we have to resource that, as the CNO said. I would say um, with respect to talent management, uh, what we're trying to do in the Navy and the enlisted side with detailing marketplace is to truly be much more transparent in terms of what's available to sailors so that if it's a single sailor or one with a family, they have a much greater, play a much greater role, have much more leverage in deciding what they're going to do next and how they manage their own career from apprentice to journeyman uh, to supervisor. They're thirsty for that. Uh, we are committed to delivering it. Uh, we're relatively early uh, in this process of delivering that to the fleet, but we're very optimistic in terms of where it's headed.